Okay, so what we're going to do is look at three different molecules and compare them and determine whether each one has a molecular dipole or not. And so the three molecules we're going to look at are carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and sulfur dioxide. Okay. Now, in order to figure out whether a molecule has a dipole, in other words, whether the electron density is shifted toward one side of the molecule or the other, then we need to first draw the Lewis structure, then uh, draw the molecule showing the geometry, and then after that we'll be able to see and discuss whether we see a molecular dipole present. Okay. Now notice that all three of these molecules have oxygen involved, which is an electronegative element, so oxygen is greedy for electrons. It's going to pull electron density toward itself in these molecules, but just because oxygen is in the molecule does not mean that there will be a molecular dipole, an overall molecular dipole in the molecule. Okay, So let's look at carbon monoxide first. So carbon monoxide, if we draw the Lewis structure, we're going to add up the valence electrons. So we have 4 plus 6. That's going to give us 10 valence electrons. Let's go ahead and string this guy together. I'm going to bond carbon to oxygen. And we've used two electrons. Let's go ahead and distribute the rest of them. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay, so now we have 10 electrons distributed, but, good grief, all right, so let's get that. So we have 10 elect electrons distributed, but carbon does not have an octet. So what do we need to do? And if you said share, you are right to form, in this case, a triple bond. So we're going to lasso that pair of electrons and lasso this pair of electrons. And when I redraw it, we'll end up with this, okay? So there's carbon monoxide. And let me just fix those little guys. Okay, so there's carbon monoxide. Now, this is a molecule that it's going to turn out has both a bond dipole and we know that because the electronegativity difference between carbon and oxygen is a fairly decent amount. And so electrons are going to be drawn toward oxygen in this bond. Now, because this is all there is to the molecule, this diatomic molecule, it also has a molecular dipole. So this is a case where it has both a bond dipole and a molecular dipole. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that dipole moment arrow on the molecule. And so think to yourself which way it should point. And if you said toward oxygen with the arrow and then the little partial plus or the plus side on carbon, then you'd be right. Okay? So carbon monoxide is a polar molecule and it does have an overall molecular dipole. And incidentally, of course, it also has bond dipoles because it's just a carbon-oxygen bond. Okay, it's just a carbon bonded to an oxygen. Okay, so let's look at carbon dioxide now. All right, so now things are going to change just a little bit. So again, let's do the same thing. Let's add up the valence electrons. We have four for carbon, and then now two times six. So we're going to end up with 16 valence electrons. Okay, carbon is the central atom. So I'm going to bond each oxygen to carbon. And I've used four electrons, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Okay. Now, we've used up all of our valence electrons, but carbon does not have an octet. So we need to make some of these electrons share. So I'm going to take that pair and make them share and this pair right here. And then when I redraw this molecule, then we're going to have oxygen with two lone pairs and a double bond to carbon 
and the same thing on the other side. Okay. All right, so that's carbon monoxide. Now, think to yourself, what shape is that? All right, so yes, it's linear. Okay, and if it's linear, then the bond angles are 180 degrees, right? Okay, so we have 180 degree bond angles. Now, another question. Look at the bond dipoles. So that means look at each pair of atoms in the molecule, so carbon and oxygen on one side, carbon and oxygen on the other side, and think about which way the bond dipoles are pointing. And so, as we said earlier, oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, and so electron density in this bond will be drawn toward oxygen. And same thing goes on the other side, electron density is drawn toward that oxygen. All right. So now this is a case where those bond dipoles actually cancel each other out. So they're pulling in equal and opposite directions. So the bond dipoles cancel. So that means there is no overall molecular dipole. So no not a molecular dipole present. Okay, so we would also say that this is a nonpolar molecule. Okay, so that's carbon monoxide. All right, so our last little friend here is sulfur dioxide. Okay, so we did carbon dioxide carbon monoxide, and now we're going to talk about sulfur dioxide. And so, again, add up the valence electrons. We have 6 for sulfur, 2 times 6 for the oxygen, so we're going to end up with 18. Okay, so if I go ahead and draw the Lewis structure, I'm going to bond these oxygens, just like I did for carbon dioxide. And let's go ahead and distribute the electrons. So we've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. And we realize that, yes, we have two left, so we have to put them on the central atom. All right, so again, this is the reason why it's so important to count up the valence electrons, because now we have seen that we actually have a lone pair on sulfur, and we didn't know that just looking at the molecule. So... Last thing, I'm just going to go ahead and draw one of the resonance forms for this. So, because sulfur needs its octet. So let's go ahead and rope that lone pair and redraw him. Showing geometry this time. Okay. And so what shape is that? If you said bent, you are right. All right. And again, I'm not going to talk. I'm, I, in an earlier video, I talked about the resonance for this molecule. But we're just going to work off of this one of the structures. Okay, so this is a bent molecule. And we remember that the bond angle is less than 120 degrees, for also from a previous video. All right. So now, let's think about the dipoles in this molecule though. So let's look at the bond dipoles first. Oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur. So there's a bond dipole pointing toward that oxygen and another one pointing toward the other oxygen. Now notice how both of them are pointing in the overall down direction. Okay? And so this molecule, those bond dipoles do not cancel out, all right? And so we can see that they're overall going in the down direction toward oxygen. What we haven't talked about is the lone pair in there. And so I'm not going to draw an overall molecular dipole arrow for this molecule, but this is a polar molecule. These bond dipoles between sulfur and oxygen do not cancel out. So let's go ahead and write down that this is a polar molecule.
it does have an overall molecular dipole. And just another thing to keep in mind whenever you're looking at these types of problems and whether you're trying to figure out whether a molecule has an overall molecular dipole or not. If the molecule is symmetrical, like carbon dioxide, for instance, so it's a linear molecule, it's symmetrical, there's an oxygen on each side, often, in fact, you know, if they're symmetrical and it's all the same bonded atom, those dipoles are going to cancel out. So we'll talk about an example like that in just a few minutes in another video. But they're equal and opposite, the molecule is symmetrical, they're pointing in the opposite direction, and they're the same magnitude. So those cancel out, where for sulfur dioxide, they're both generally, those bond dipoles are pointing in the down direction toward those oxygens, and there's nothing to offset it going the other direction. So these bond dipoles don't cancel out, leaving an overall molecular dipole, and then also, of course, for carbon monoxide, the overall molecular dipole is going toward the oxygen, and there's nothing on the other side to offset that.